Why do we make prostrations? In the writings of the great Hesychist Bishop Theoleptus of Philadelphia, 1322, he admonishes his spiritual children, Do not neglect prostration. It provides an image of man's fall into sin and expresses the confession of our sinfulness. Getting up, on the other hand, signifies repentance and the promise to lead a life of virtue. Let each prostration be accompanied by a noetic invocation of Christ, so that, by falling before the Lord in soul and body, you may gain the grace of the God of souls and bodies. The importance of prostrations from Theoleptus' point of view is far more spiritual than physical. In bending our knees, we assume an attitude of humility before the God to whom we offer our prayer. Kneeling, then touching our forehead to the ground, we acknowledge our sinfulness. We create a living image of our fall into sin. Our very posture represents a confession of that state, a calling to mind of our spiritual poverty, of our susceptibility to passions of greed, lust, anger, and malice. And we make our descent in body and in spirit we confess as well the name above every name, the name that upholds the universe, as the shepherd of Hermas expresses it, and upholds our personal well world as well. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Then, as we rise to our feet, this confession, both of Christ and of our sinfulness, becomes a bodily symbol, a virtual promise, that change will occur in our life. We commit ourselves to repentance, to a turning from the old Adam to the new. The inner transformation signified by this gesture, of course, does not come about as a result of our prostrations, and not even as a result of our decision to repent. Like every aspect of our Christian life, this transforma transformation, the power to act upon our commitment, is a gift of grace that comes down from above, from the Father of Lights. This passage from the Epistle of James, chapter 1, verse 17, however, needs to be read in its context, expressed so well throughout the letter. What does it profit, my brethren, if a man says he has faith but has not works? Can his faith alone save him? Show me your faith apart from your works, and I by my works will show you my faith. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so faith apart from works is dead. When we consider ascetic disciplines such as fasting and prostrations, it is essential that we remember words like these. Those disciplines can indeed work in inner transformation by purifying and directing our mind and spirit toward the one thing needful. But they are never ends in themselves. As the Holy Fathers teach repeatedly, they exist for the sole purpose of leading us to Christ, who alone heals our brokenness, forgives our sin, and draws us into eternal communion with God and with one another. Prostrations are a biblical posture of prayer. In the Old Testament, when the people fell on their faces in the time of Moses and Aaron, they were doing prostrations, and the book of Revelation records angels and elders falling on their faces before God. With the average Orthodox layperson today, prostrations are most associated with the prayer of St. Ephraim the Syrian. We recite this throughout Great Lent, prostrating ourselves after each clause. O Lord and Master of my life, take from me the spirit of sloth, despair, lust of power, and idle talk, but give rather the spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love to thy servant. Yea, O Lord and King, grant me to see my own transgressions and not to judge my brother, for blessed art thou, unto ages of ages. Amen. 
What days do we make prostrations? For lay people, Great Lent is the major season of prostrations. In addition to the three of them in the prayer of St. Ephraim during the first week of Lent, the penitential canon of St. Andrew of Crete includes many, many prostrations. There are specific times not to make prostrations, such as on certain feast days, also during the Divine Liturgy, Orthodox tradition instructs the faithful to refrain from kneeling in prayer between Pascha and Pentecost. We also don't do prostrations on Sundays in honor of the Resurrection. In some churches, prostrations are made on Saturdays, in others they are not. The guidelines for prostrations outside of the sanctuary will undoubtedly vary from parish to parish, country to country. As always, consult the priests if you are uncertain. As a general rule of thumb, in unfamiliar circumstances, do as other par parishioners do, unless they are clearly violating holy tradition. You should endeavor not to call attention to yourself, or have a super correct attitude when it comes to matters like this judging others who do not do it right. The pattern in Great Lent is that prostrations are appointed at various points during the Monday through Friday services, the days when Alleluia is sung at the beginning of Matins, but not on Saturdays. Outside of Lent, the times when one should make prostrations are less rigidly defined. However, the following guidelines might help. During the liturgy, the divine liturgy, prostrate to the ground at 1. Let us give thanks unto the Lord, the beginning of the Eucharistic prayer. 2. After the consecration of the gifts, at the end of the hymn, we hymn thee, we bless thee. 3. At the end of the hymn to the Mother of God. 4. Before the Our Father. 5. At the Holies are for the Holy. 6. When the chalice is brought out at the words, with fear of God. 7. If one has not taken communion, at the presentation of the chalice, at the words, now and ever. One can also make prostrations when venerating the relics and icons, and at other times during the service, when you feel moved to do so. Very often, under the guidance of a spiritual father, we will attempt to keep a rule of making an allotted number of prostrations every day. For this, again, one would discuss with their spiritual father. How do I make a prostration? Begin by making the sign of the cross, bending forward, and begin to lower the palms of your hands to rest on the floor. It's more efficient to focus on what you do with your hands than what you do with your knees. If you instead follow the sign of the cross with a gentle controlled fall forward, aiming to rest your palms to the floor directly below the shoulders, not too close and not too far apart, and then allowing your knees to fall into place on the floor, at the same time bringing down your forehead to the floor. Then you can push off lightly from your palms and return to a standing position. You will almost be able to make the whole movement down, death, and up, resurrection, in one. If you are in form, then you can perform a metanea, making the sign of the cross, then bowing forward and reaching to the floor, or as close as, as possible, with the right hand. The word metanea comes from the Greek metanoa, which means change of heart or repentance. Even without a full prostration, we can all declare with our bodies our desire to change our fallen ways and return to God. 